we're going to look at something known as the Intermediate Value Theorem, which is really a theorem about whether or not an equation has a solution. So let's first of all look at it, uh, the statement of the Intermediate Value Theorem. It's a bit messy, um, lots of terminology, but suppose f is a continuous function and n is a number between f of a and f of b. a and b are uh, two endpoints of an interval. Then there is a number c in the interval from a to b such that f of c is equal to n. Okay, so a picture is in order to help us understand this. Here's a picture. Uh, here we have a, and so f of a is way up here. We have the point a comma f of a. Here's b, f of b down here, a point b comma f of b. Now what does it mean for a function to be continuous? Well, graphically it means that we can draw the function um, so that we do not have to pick up our pencil. So um, it, basically it says that if I want to start here, at this point, I don't ever pick up my pencil when I get to B. Okay, no matter what curve I draw, there is absolutely no way of avoiding that dotted line. Okay, so there's always some place where the graph crosses that dotted line. And if we trace it down, this is the value of c that we're talking about where we say there is a number c in the interval from a to b such that f of c is equal to n. Okay. So really what this is all doing for us is it's saying that our function equaling n ha will have a solution provided that n is between f of a and f of b. Our first example, we have a very um, simple function, 5x minus 2 to the point 8x. We want to show that there's a number c in the interval from 4 to 5, so that f of c is equal to 10. So a very straightforward application of the intermediate value theorem. All right, so first of all, we have to make sure that our function is continuous. If our function is not continuous, then all bets are off. Okay, We're not guaranteed that there's some such a number c. Uh, f is 5x, which is a linear function, also a polynomial, um, minus 2 to the point 8x, which is an exponential function. It's the diff f is the difference of two continuous functions, so f is continuous. This is an important thing to state when we're dealing with the intermediate value theorem. You have to state or even show that the function is continuous. Now, we want to know, is there a number for which the function value is equal to 10. So we're going to let n be equal to 10. If we go back to the statement of the theorem, 10 is the value n. Well, now we calculate the function at each of the endpoints, at 4 and at 5. So f of 4, we plug it in 5 times 4, minus 2 to the 0 0.8 times 4, that's 2 to the what, uh, 3.2. I don't know what that value is exactly, but when we calculate it using a calculator, we get 10.81 approximately. That's one endpoint. Now we'll evaluate the function at the other point. f of 5, we get 5 times 5, that's 25. This actually we can calculate. Uh, that is, uh, the exponent would be 4. So 2 to the 4th is 16. 25 minus 16 is 9. So we've got all the information that we need. We have the two function values. We've shown that the function is continuous. Now we just need to put the pieces of the intermediate value theorem in place. Our function at 5 is 9. It's less than 10, but the function at 4 is greater than 10. Since 10 is between these two function values, and since f is continuous, there will have to be some place between 4 and 5 for which uh, the function is equal to 10. That's the intermediate value theorem. A straightforward application. Well, now let's look at one where we have to sort of put it into the proper form. We have an equation this time, x cubed plus 5, equals 2x squared plus 7x, we want to show that that equation has a solution somewhere in the interval between 3 and 4. Okay, so we kind of see the interval stuff, but I don't see a function and I don't see a, a numerical value. So what we do in this circumstance, we solve um, our function equal to a number. And I think the easiest thing is just to bring all of the terms to one side of the equation, which we've done here. And then you'll always be equal to zero. So the first part, this cubic quantity, is going to be our function f, and our value n will be 0. 
So f of x is going to be our function, the left-hand side of the equation, n is equal to zero. Now n has to be a number. It can't be something that varies. Um, it has to be a number, so we let n be zero. So we do exactly as we did before. We're going to evaluate the function at both the endpoints, this time at 3 and at 4. We're going to look and sh make sure that the function is continuous. That's actually, I think, the first thing we do. And then we verify that 0 is between those two function values. So f is continuous. It's a polynomial. Um, f of 3, we plug 3 into all the values for x, and we get negative 7. So f of 3 is negative 7. F of 4, we plug everything in, we get positive 9. And this is the nice thing about having n be 0, because it's very easy to recognize that 0 is between a negative number and a positive number. And so now we just do our little flourish at the end, where we state the intermediate value theorem and how it applies, how it applies to our particular situation. F of 3 is less than 0. Yes, negative 7 is less than 0. F of 4 is greater than 0. 9 is greater than 0. Our function is continuous. So f of c equals 0 has a solution, and if this has a solution in the interval from 3 to 4, then this equation will also have a solution in that interval.